this is impromptu. I am here tonight doing a live at any old time. I thought I would just jump in and do something and see how it goes. So hi Gavin, how are you doing? I was supposed to do a live with somebody and she's sick or something, I don't know. So I decided I'll jump in and talk about Saturday. Saturday is usually Saturday at this time of the year. I would be so busy going to the to Sheridan and all these places where they get plants early for the garden and get seeds and start putting them in boxes and getting them ready. You need six to eight weeks so you can have them in the ground in May. But this is not done. So today I spent my time online looking, hi Yoko. I spent my time online looking at catalogs and, and thinking I have to shop for my garden and I have to shop um, online to buy plants and flowers and seeds for my garden and this has to be done online so that was really a different thing for me so here i am but i did I had a busy saturday it was a beautiful saturday it's not cold as before so it the day started out really well with a lot of things to do and i made shortbread <laughs> for my son-in-law it was his birthday on the 17th and he wanted short bread and then I did, I did laundry I cleaned up I'm, I don't know why I did that the cleaning lady is coming on Wednesday but I was in that mood because once you make short bread the kitchen goes crazy so anyway then made lunch and then went through this thing looking at this catalog for plants for the garden um, oh thank you and there I was looking at this and I'm thinking you know what Normally, I go there. I go to Sheridan to look for my seedlings and, and see what I can get. And now I'm looking at them and it seems so alien. I've never had to buy anything for my garden online, and except roses. So the, I, my, my passion is roses. I love my garden and you guys will see it in the summer because I do all my lives in the summer and in the pergola or in the garden. Uh, it's really... It was Joe's birthday on the 17th, my daughter's husband on the 17th, and he loves shortbread and he loves this. And there's a lady who lives not too far away, she's from Sochi, Sochi in Russia, and she comes and helps me with the garden. Well, no, she doesn't help, she does it. I just, I'm just there. I used to do all of the gardening. I would be in the garden from eight to eight. And my husband did all the cooking. He doesn't like barbecuing, so I'd be barbecuing and gardening eight to eight. But as you get a little bit wonderful in your life, you decide. So she comes and she loves the garden. She loves flowers. She comes from Sochi, which is not a cold, as cold as the rest of Russia. It's, the, it's temperate there. So she enjoys, um, she enjoys being in the garden. She actually loves my garden. So anyway, I told her it was Joe's birthday. And she brought this big cake for him. But they are at the lake house. So I said, Jillian, she brought the cake. Jillian is my daughter. So they're coming down tomorrow so Joe can get his cake. And then I said, you guys need to give her a gift. So they have to go see her. So they, my daughter and her husband is at the lake house since um, February last year. I see them every weekend. But the lake house is an hour away from oh, my house in Toronto. And will be about an hour and a half from them, the house in the city. They live in the city. But since it was um, COVID and they had to work from home, so off they went to the lake house, and that's where they are, and it's a house. It's not a, it's on the lake, and today they went for a 10, they went for 10,000 step, an hour and a half of walking on the frozen lake. So they do that every day, and so they can eat all the sweets they want. So they, also it's beautiful there, it's on Lake Skugog, and it's not too far from, from my house, but further from them. So they being up there is great. And I don't think they have been to the condo maybe more than just twice since they left. So it's a quite a different thing to do that. So anyway, so that was my Saturday. I, I did all kinds of things, spent time looking at these things and wondering, well, what am I doing? Like, I am so confused. If you have never bought plants on, uh, online, it's so confusing. I bought, I bought something called ground cover roses. A few years ago from Costco and they're stunning. They're at the back and at the front of the house and they're beautiful. They bloom all year round and they're so beautiful. So roses are my passion. I love it. What's the message from, who's that? What's the message from Coty Good God? I don't know what, what you mean, Donato. You always have some things that throws me away. Hi, Ali. 
Um, so yeah, so that was, so I decided I'll do a live because I have the time and I'm confused. So if anybody has bought um, plants on from online to nurture for six to eight weeks before it goes in the ground in the, ground in the spring, let me know because I normally go to the nursery and choose them and put them in. And I also have to look for some climbing roses. I need a climbing roses to go around the pergola. Uh, I have this pergola that looks like a spaceship. Um, somebody built it for me last summer. It used to be the reading nook. So because I read incessantly, I'll tell you what's the message from my God today. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> my God, my, my message from God today. Enjoy the moment, take in the day. I always do, but it was kind of special. Just enjoy, just to enjoy the day. So anyway, this pergola was built last, last summer in the place where the reading nook used to be. So it's still the reading nook. And what I like about it, I call it my corner of knowledge because that's the reading nook. It was there for all those years. And it was really a nook. And then I said, you know what, I would like to make it a little prettier. So I, it, so I got the man to come and build this pergola. And he said, what do you want? I said, well, what do you have to offer? So he showed me, he, he couldn't show me the design. And then he said, I need 10 more inch or whatever. Anyway, I showed him where it, what I wanted and the area. And he built this thing. And so when <laughs> I saw it, I, I kept looking at it. But I like the different and I like the unusual. So it looks like a spaceship, but it's actually gorgeous. So anyway, when it was finished, it's the middle of COVID, I took a picture and sent to, to my, to put it on Facebook for one, and then my brother in New York saw it. Instead of calling me, he calls my brother in England and said, where is she? It's COVID, where is she traveling? Look at this place where she's standing. Do you know where she is? And then uh, my brother, that brother said, no, this is the, the, the four of you calling me. She has a house. Somebody call her. And he said, no, she's at home. That's her backyard. He said, oh, thank God. So that was my baby brother freaking out because he saw me standing in the pergola. And he thought I was somewhere in the world because, you know, I travel quite a bit and it's kind of confusing for them. So anyway, he called me and I told him, it's the backyard. He said, oh, you did something. Oh, I thought you were going somewhere. I said, no. So anyway, it's in the northwest corner of the back of the garden, and it gets, it gets the sun. It's actually beautiful. The way he did it is like, it's not really light. It's, he used two inch strips or something, and it reflects a shadow when the, at a certain time of the day, and it's actually stunning. So I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun in there. I love reading and writing in there, in that corner, and I call it the color, corner of knowledge, as I said. So in the corner of knowledge, if you have a spot in your house that you do things in, that you enjoy being, being in, you're supposed to name it. That's what they, they taught us. So you name it, you call it the, the, um, the corner of knowledge or the corner of wisdom. And if that's where you sit to write. If it's somewhere you sit to, to, to meditate, you call it your, your connection, the connection area where you connect with yourself, with your God. So you can choose that. So the, it's in the northwest corner, and I really like it. The other car, corner is, that would be open to do that would be southwest. And I, it's, we're so close to the lake that, no, I prefer this corner. And has always been, except when you're sitting there and the squirrels pee on your head. <laughs> but nature has a right to do what it is, what they want. Remember, we infringe on them. We went in their spot, so now they can do what they want. So... And tons of birds and butterflies are in this garden. I have lots of bees because of the flowers and it's an amazing place. So I just wanted to say about a little bit about trying to find things online for a garden and how difficult it is to do it when you're not a customer shopping online. Thank you, my dear friend, Ali. So Ali, so anyway, so Donato, what did you say? Say what you want to say. I talked about my, my adventure of the day baking and cooking and cruising on the internet and going to Sheridan, that's all I did. So, do you have access to the lake so I can go swimming? Of course you can go swimming. <laughs> when, we were, when we were younger, we used to swim in the lake and there used to be a waterfall, but if, as the trees and you know things happen, the waterfall is just a trinkle. But the, it's beautiful by the lake where I live. It's oh, gorgeous. I, 
I took a, a picture last October during the, in fall, in the fall, November, and I posted it on Facebook, and I, movement makers too, and it's, it's amazing, but it's a steep hill, and um, we call it Tracker's Hill. So the lake, the, the, the bluffs is erodes. So now they, have, they build these walls from all the artifacts and stones from the, and buildings in Toronto. So it's about, you could walk for maybe about eight miles on the lake. And then the way the stones are put against the, as a brick wall for the lake, you can sit. So we, sometimes we go down there to picnic. When my grandson visits, he goes down there. My son and his friends used to ride their bikes down and use their toes as the bricks. I know how that was running shoes and money going down the drain. So I took his son there just for the experience. And, and he was just flabbergasted. He couldn't believe it. So it's a lovely place to get by the lake. And once a year, my girlfriend and I, we climb the bluffs. That is a tradition. So we get together and we climb the bluffs. And... And we do it every year, every, every September. So we climb up and then we walk back home on top of the bluffs, go to from streets and it's about 12 kilometers that we walk. But before that, we climb, we climb the steepness of the bluffs. It's really nice. It's your, your hands and knees doing it. And we've done it for years and years and years. So that's Janet. That's my walking partner. When we could walk. So now I go walk in and if I see her, we'll put our mask on. She walks on the street, I walk on the sidewalk. And that's what we do. So I hope you had a wonderful little visit with me. So can you run? Of course you can run up the bluffs. You would, but I would. No, you can't run up the bluffs. It's too steep. Actually, the roots of the trees is what you use to hold. And when we go through there, we see deers and all sorts of animals. And, and everything is there. So it's beautiful. It's so beautiful there. Um... What else? It's, it's just amazing and the bluffs is always nice. Hi Corinne. I decided to do an impromptu live. So there I am. So I was just chatting about the garden and getting things ready. You should know. And that's it. So thanks guys for dropping in. You, 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 you're too dressed up to go. <laughs> to go where? <laughs> I'm always dressed up. I dress up to go everywhere. Anybody that knows me, I'm always dressed up. I, I dress up when I'm at home by myself. I always dress up. I love dressing up. I dress up for myself because the reflection is what I see in the mirror and I like seeing what I see. So I prefer to be dressed up than not dressed up. Keep going. We are not done with you yet. <laughs> oh, you, you are not funny at all. You know that, right? Um... So yeah, so if you're not done with me, say something then. You're not done with me yet. Say something. So you're not saying anything. And then, so the bluffs is, you want to go swimming in the lake. That's a nice place to go. Just go. And actually, if you know Toronto, you can walk almost to Brimley from, from where we are. It's Saturday night party time. No, it's not Saturday night party. We're not having any party. Are you going to drink or something? It's Lent. You don't drink during Lent. You have to fast and you, know, you give something up. What's your favorite time with your, my grandkids' summer time? I love all the time with them. They're, you learn so much from children, you know. Um, anytime. I, I, like the, I, like, I love kids to be in nature. So in the summer, I love them in, in the garden. I get them to eat straight from the garden, like cucumbers, tomatoes. And my grandson loves that. And the other little kids that call me Grammy, they would, would do that. My new granddaughter hasn't gotten into that yet, but she eats everything. She's 20 months. But um, no, the, the summertime is great for kids to do things. And we all have ice cream when the ice cream shop comes around. We all do. You grew, grew up at Brimley and Steels, okay? So that's your, your up north of us. We're out at the lake. We're right on the lake. That's where we are. Near Islands Pastry Shop. I don't know that place. So anyway, so that's so that's where you grew up. Okay. Well, we are by the lake. We can walk to the lake anytime. It's very easy, simple, and we are close to the Guild Inn. You know the Guild Inn. Everybody knows the Guild Inn. So it's right there, close to Laurier. That's where Laurier, that high school is. So I'm guess you know everything. So any more questions? Why not at it? I think I've done the time I was supposed to do. So anyway, guys, 
Have an absolutely wonderful Saturday evening and thanks for dropping out just because I wanted to go in there and complain about having to buy my, my, my plants online <laughs> and not knowing what to do. So can we swim, swim in the lake? Yes, you can swim in the lake. That's what they see. I see people swimming there all the time. It's really clean. The water is clean. So you can come and go swim in the lake. I'm sure you'll find lots of others. Last summer, we went walking and I went into the lake. You have lots more questions for you. I mean, where are they? <laughs> I did question night last night and, and it became the Tessa Marie show. So. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> the Donato Precious. Okay, what are you going to ask the question about? I guess you have no questions. But anyway, Yoko was on. Yoko, we have to do our Saturday thing. So we, when you, everything is over and you're feeling good, better, we'll do that. But it was just a chat. So we can get back together again. So everybody knows what it's going to be like. Summer is coming. How many sit-ups today? 15. Go to go away. <laughs> I did 15 sit-ups today. What's your point? <laughs> so I exercise every day. Yes, Yoko, we have to do something with Saturday. Saturday is, is too empty. We have to figure this out. Amazing. How did we get rid of how do we get rid of worry? How do you, <laughs> you know, when people ask questions like that, I, I'm not going to say that's a good question because it's, a, it's really a question that's deep. I believe when somebody says um, it's a good question, that's because they don't have the answer. So I do have the answer. How do you get rid of worry? You have to decide what you're worrying about. You're either worrying about what was or what might be. Um, because in the moment, you are fearful. And you, if you take the moment, moment by moment, you won't worry about it. So it depends when you're worried. You don't get rid of worry. You decide how to treat worry, how to manage worry, how to handle it. So my first thing I do when I'm facing a difficult situation is grant me the serenity to, to accept what I cannot change. I ask for the serenity to accept what I cannot change. And from there, I make a decision. I might say that until I come to a decision. So if there is something that is unusual that is happening and it would cause worry, I usually just say, what can I do, what can I do about it? But remember, I come from the school with a lot of sayings where they would say, why cry over spilled milk? If it's broken already, why cry about it being broken? What you can do is what can I do to fix it? What can I do from now? What change can I make? So to be honest, people ask questions of that of me. I don't worry. I deal with it as it comes, and when it, when it comes, I look at it, I don't worry about the past, I don't go there, because I can't do anything about the past. I have decided one of the things I will not do is to jump into tomorrow. There are too many important things to do for me, rather than jump into tomorrow. Memories as a child. It's always to do with my parents um, and my, fa my family, the fa my father's family was bigger, a huge family, and more, more involved, more forceful, more stronger, more, um, more equipped. <laughs> they were very equipped, uh, very close, always with each other. I grew up and I would, when, we, when I went to the plantation, I would, when, they, when they moved there, they didn't always live on the plantation, they lived in the city and different places. They had house in the city, so we were all born there. And then you'd be up there and at four o'clock in the afternoon, like clockwork, you would hear this triumph coming up with, in, I don't know what gear Uncle Ivan drove it in, but it's a little red triumph he had. And you just hear this thing coming down the hill, up to, he comes up the hill then down into the plantation. Uncle Ivan, four o'clock, then Uncle Hughes, then Uncle Stafford. They all came to have coffee and cake every, and to watch BBC News and to listen to cricket results, or if there's a cricket match, they all came to, to watch India beat to, um, Australia, the West Indies beat England. So we had our, this, the family was really close. Our family, the, and it's a lot of people, hundreds of people, like 350 people at the wedding, and then that was all family. And you need, you know, friends weren't invited yet. So that is to show you what it was like. I'm with my father's siblings and his sisters and the cousins and the extended cousins and the children friends are very close. So that's so that type of thing 
was a big thing all the time. What's your favorite food to eat? I don't know. I I I, I don't know. I I I have very few. I I don't know. Favorite food to eat. I eat everything. I I love fish. I adore lobster. I love shellfish. I love conch. I love um. I love different. I like trying different things. So I love. But my favorite food. If you rather meat to fish, I'd go for fish. I'll have some meat, but it has to be. You kill the animal when you feed me the meat. You're killing it again. It has to be well done. Um, yet yeah, my dad ate it raw with blood streaming down. But anyway, I saw that. I love cheese. We had we used a lot. We had a lot of cheese growing up. Blue cheese, name it, all kinds of cheese. So I love cheeses. But my favorite food, if I had to eat it by itself, would be seafood. So that's it. But not too much meat. I'm not a big pasta eater either. I will eat a little of it. Um, I will eat some rice because I cook it. I don't eat it. Um, I don't know. I eat, I'm a grazer. I'm not a meal eater. I like a little bit now and a little bit later. So that's it. Are you done with all your questions? <laughs> so anyway, so guys, I'm leaving Donato to his questions. What is your greatest movie? I told you that already. So. Yes, and Jimmy, with the worry stuff, man, don't worry about what you cannot change. Um, no, <laughs> hold on, hold on. You're going to make your brain. You cannot keep me here, you know. I have to go. So the most important question there was not to worry. That's well, how do you get rid of worry? You won't get rid of it, but you're going to have to learn how to deal with it. And that's one of the things you will do. Um, so I hope that helped you because nothing helps Donato. He's never satisfied. He thinks of something to tell me. And he was doing the question there. And Yoko always comes. So Saturday wasn't too bad. We had a good Saturday. What can you do to eliminate stress better? How do you mean stress better? You either eliminate it or you play with it. Stress comes because you're fearful. And then it goes to anxiety. And that's when you lose all hope. So first, stress is, you deal with stress by exercising. I, I'm sure you know that. By exercising, by, you know, doing running, swimming, um, dancing, um, doing yoga, meditation, and maybe telling that person that's comfortable giving you the stress where to go and give them all the directions on how to get there. <laughs> so if it's a, another human being causing you stress, then you have a right to tell them off. I think so. Because somebody shouldn't put this, their behavior shouldn't cause you stress. But you, to eliminate stress, you have to change the situation. You have to change how you deal with it. Um, stress comes because your emotion is not responding properly either. And that's where the emotional prosperity is wise. Because you have to remember, your emotional response is based on how you are interpreting what was just done or said to you and you have to choose your emotion if your emotional prosperity is high you're going to make a decision at the time to say you know what this is not the time to take this on i am not taking it on but if your emotion is already thought and things are just not going right you're going to blow off at the least little bit of provocation if somebody just touches you in the wrong place just brush by you boom like an explosion so, it, so the, the um, pillar of prosperity, emotional pillar has to be strong. And so you know mental and emotional is not the same. Emotional is how you react to the information right at the moment. Mental is taking that information and using it in the future. If you, if you love to listen and communicate so much, how do you think these skills have benefited you in your career? Oh, that has been amazing. Um, there's something I, I need to say because a lot of people think because you talk a lot, you don't listen. That's not always true. Hi, Faith. That's not always true. I do talk a lot, but I listen. I listen when I don't know. And I, as I've said it again, I don't listen with the hair in air. I don't listen with that. When you're talking, I am intent on you. I listen with my brain. I actually shift it. I can feel that I do this. I get into it and I listen. 
So I'm watching you, and many people will think that when they have movement makers or when I'm at a meeting, I listen, unless I have something to say. Because it's only by observation and listening you can know what to do. You can know who you're dealing with. You know the personalities around you. So that's what I do. But when it is my time to speak, I will speak up. But, and I do speak a lot because I enjoy being the teacher. I enjoy being the one that will enlighten you and educate you. But in order for me to do that, I have to listen to everything that's happening around me. And I'm very good at that. It's not, it's not um, always good for the people who speak to me because they forget what they say, and, but I don't. Because although you hear with your ears, you can listen with your brain. Um, we need more questions from her, so she stays with us. She can't leave us yet. She looks too good. You know what? <laughs> Go to sleep. Ask her lots of questions, Faith. Or you would hear my name. Um, <laughs> just behave yourself. Anyway, yeah, so listening is very important. Um, and observation, listen and observation. You can, you can sit and watch. You can sit and watch people, how they, re how they react, how they function, by just observing and being, taking it in. You can be part of the conversation and still be able to do that. Um, so, <laughs> Mick, what is that? Anyway, Donato, I think Faith has other things to do with his life. He just drop in. He always drops in to say hi. And you are just keeping me there. So I'm going. So good night and have a wonderful evening. And go swim in the lake if that's what is good for you tonight. So take care. It's been a long time talking. I was supposed to be on with this person at six. So there you go. And it just didn't go the way it was supposed to go. So have a wonderful night, everybody. And thanks for dropping in, everybody. Come and have fun. Take care, guys. Bye. Happy Saturday. Don't do something nice for yourself today. Do something beautiful for yourself today. Breathe because you have the ability to breathe. <laughs>